Whenever you talk about the topic of Seventh-day Adventists and abortion, one of the first and inevitable questions is going to be current abortion statistics for Adventist hospitals. There are two types of people who will ask this question. Group number one are people who are simply curious. They just found out about abortion in our church. They are upset and outraged to learn about this history in our hospitals, and they are sincerely curious to know more. Group number two are almost always church leaders, but I'll explain why in a minute. In 2 Samuel chapter 11 is the story of King David, Bathsheba, and Uriah. In order to cover up the adultery, the Bible tells us that King David gave the order to his military commander Joab to kill Uriah. In chapter 12, the prophet Nathan comes to King David with a message from God. Thus says the Lord God, you despised the commandment of the Lord and you have killed Uriah. Notice very carefully that King David did not himself use a sword to kill Uriah. Furthermore, his military commander Joab also did not directly kill Uriah. He died because Joab told his troops to withdraw protection by retreating from him and leaving him to be killed by the enemy. Even though King David himself drew no blood, God declared him guilty of premeditated murder because by his position he gave the authority. King David issued the order to intentionally withdraw protection and allow Uriah to be killed, and God granted him no leniency. King David was just as guilty of murder as if he himself had taken Uriah's life by the sword. Of all the places on planet Earth that an unborn child should be safe from harm, it should be a hospital with the Adventist name. Of all places, an unborn child should be free from speech, justifying their premeditated violent death it should be the Adventist Church. The Adventist Church itself is guilty of premeditated murder because it is a documented fact published in government statistics and in our own publications that Adventist hospitals with the Adventist name, with the full approval and permission of Adventist Church leadership, have intentionally, violently dismembered tens of thousands of little boys and girls. Abortion in our hospitals is the exact same actual real-life killing of Uriah with the sword, but there is another important point. Don't miss this. The moral position of the Adventist Church for over 48 years has been a moral witness to the world that we do, in fact, condone and approve of intentional abortion. Just like King David telling Joab, we Adventists tell the world that it is okay to withdraw protection from the unborn child and allow it to be intentionally and deliberately killed. Abortion to save a mother's physical life is not intentional because the intent is to save life. But we Adventists for over 48 years have supported intentional abortion to kill innocent children. The exact same health clause used in Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton to justify abortion on demand without restriction is the exact same health clause used in the official church position. Anywhere from 56 million to 41 million children are dismembered alive every year by abortion, making it the number one leading cause of death worldwide. Since our church started supporting this, multiplied hundreds of millions of children have been killed, and we, we, God's church on planet Earth, have violated our sacred trust by authorizing and supporting the greatest genocide the world has ever seen. We are guilty by not only practicing it in our hospitals, but by our moral witness. Even if our hospitals never performed any intentional abortions, even if there were zero abortions in Adventist hospitals, we are still guilty of bearing false witness. We are guilty of following the crowd to do evil and perverting justice by condemning the innocent to death. If you are truly concerned about the Adventist church representing Jesus Christ on this earth, then here is probably the best advice you will ever hear. Are you ready? Forget the hospitals. That's right, forget the hospitals. Never ever ever talk about the hospitals. The question about abortion in our hospitals is a trap. That is a trap question that you must avoid. Why is that? Because abortion in our hospitals is the fruit and the official position is the root. The position was created for the specific purpose of justifying this. It was created to protect the quote, huge investment in the hospital system. If you do not like the hospital situation, then complaining is not an effective use of time. You must put the ax to the root. If you bring up abortion in our hospitals, then you will lose. It's a guaranteed loss. I have experienced this multiple times myself, and I have seen it happen over and over and over again 
again to other people. It happens constantly. People learn about abortion. They get all upset and they go talk to leaders in our church. The leaders in our church are not stupid when they see that you cannot tell the difference between the hospitals and the moral position, when they see that you are focused on the fruit and not on the root, when they see that you are focusing on the institutions and not on our official witness, then they will string you along, they will agree with you, oh yes, this is an important issue, and then they will tell you to go get current statistics, and then they will look into the issue. They do this because they know, and I know, and many people watching this video know full well that you cannot get those statistics. And here's the important point. Even if you were able to get current statistics, even if you could produce irrefutable evidence of intentional abortions happening right now and deliver that evidence to church leadership, they would do absolutely nothing. Anyone who has studied the history of abortion in our church knows that this is probably the most common tactic used by church leaders to avoid this problem. This has been used repeatedly and continues to be used even until today. Statistics have been produced on multiple occasions, but church leaders did nothing to stop it, and I have records and copies documenting this fact. For example, in the early 1990s, Adventists in the state of Maryland were upset to learn about intentional abortions in Adventist hospitals. They were very disturbed and upset to learn about this, and they began to write letters to their conference and union leaders who replied and told them that this was not, that Adventists were not involved in the business of killing unborn children. However, the lay members were connected to Adventists working in the hospitals, so they knew full well what was really going on. So they contacted the depository for the records of the Maryland State Department of Health and obtained official records of abortions being performed in Adventist hospitals. As you can see right here in just a two-year period alone, these hospitals in Maryland performed at least 1,698 abortions for a gross income of over $1,800,000. And that is just at these hospitals in Maryland and only for a two-year period. And guess what? Is this a surprise to you? When the lay members sent these official records to the church, the leadership instantly became silent and never responded anymore. Imagine that. When lay members could not get any further response, they then wrote to the GC, and eventually they got a response from Dr. Albert Whiting, who was the director of the GC Health Ministries for the entire World Church. He states right here in this letter, Surveys of our institutions indicate that only a few have been out of line with the official guidelines. Oh, thank you very much for your concern, but only a few of our institutions are murdering thousands of children. Thank you very much for your concern, but only a few of our concentration camps are killing Jews. Over 25 years ago, top church leaders all the way to the GC were fully aware of what our hospitals were doing. They covered it up, they lied about it, and when confronted with indisputable facts, these unfaithful shepherds had the audacity to tell members for the time being, let's unite behind what is positive. Forget about the hospitals. Do not fall into the trap of statistics. Leaders in our church have known for decades and have done absolutely nothing. When you are talking about abortion in the church, especially when talking with leaders, focus on the moral position and always stress the Bible and only the Bible. On Christ, the solid rock we stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Ask for the biblical evidence granting authority for intentional abortion. When talking about abortion with Adventists, you must hold on to the Bible the same way that a cowboy in a rodeo holds on to the bull because they're going to do everything possible to get away from the Bible. They're going to buck, they're going to jump, and they're going to spin around. If you think Adventist church leaders welcome questions about the Bible, just bring up abortion and why the church supports it and just be ready because chances are really good that you will be taken for a ride and if you don't hold on to the Bible, you will be thrown off. Remember, it is not your job. It is not the job or obligation of church members to go on some wild goose chase hunting for statistics, but it is the job, it is the duty, and it is the obligation of church leaders to provide Bible texts. Remember that your church leaders are being financially rewarded and being paid to produce for you texts and scripture. Nobody put a gun to their head forcing them to be employed by the church. They chose that position and they need to do their job and if they will not do it, then they need to leave. It's that simple. Here are some additional points to remember. Tip number one, once you get leaders away from the statistics and focus on the moral position, you now face another set of challenges and excuses, but I answer those in my videos. 
just be sure to avoid the trap of statistics because if you give even one inch, you will lose. Number two, during the 1980s, the American Hospital Association Guide listed only 12 of 56 Adventist hospitals in North America as providing abortion services. So even back then, the majority of Adventist hospitals did not. They did not offer the service and today, many abortions are not performed in the actual hospitals, but now in private clinics. It may certainly be the case that patients are referred to clinics through some Adventist hospitals, but even if you could provide documentation, then so what? Spend your time and energy going for the jugular, grab your Bible, and hammer away at the moral position. Number three, another variation that leaders will use instead of asking for current statistics, they will just tell you that abortions in our hospitals are only performed to save a mother's life. Again, this is just straight up misdirection. They are trying to distract you and get you away from the moral position. If a leader in the church ever tells you this, immediately bring the attention back to the moral position and ask, why the contradiction? If only for a mother's life, then why do we teach that it's okay for these four additional reasons? Church leaders are notorious when pressed on abortion. They are notorious for focusing only on the mother's life and conveniently ignoring the other four. They are hoping that you don't know and won't ask. I really hate to say this, I really do, but when talking to church leaders about abortion, you must expect that you are going to get played like a fiddle and you just have to be ready for this. When the batter is standing there in the batter's box, and sees the pitcher do the windup, he knows the ball is on the way. When you bring up abortion, you will get this misdirection thrown at you constantly, but if you're prepared, you can hit a home run for the team. That brings us to number four, always lift up Jesus. Always, always, always bring Jesus into the conversation and talk about Jesus. Say the Bible says right here that Jesus Jesus hates the shedding of innocent blood. How can we support what Jesus hates? Do not underestimate the power of Bible-based questions. Just keep bringing Jesus into the conversation and point into the Bible and repeat this question. Number five, you do not need to be some expert or pro-life apologist. You don't need to know all the different arguments or nonsense. Anyone can do this. All you have to remember are a few very simple questions. Don't get into an argument. Don't get emotional. In fact, arguments are not even necessary. Just ask very simple questions and ask leaders to provide answers. For example, where is the biblical evidence for the authority to morally support the intentional killing of unborn children? Why does our official statement on euthanasia state that we Adventists are opposed to the intentional taking of human life but our statement on abortion supports intentional taking of human life. There are five listed exceptions and only one is unintentional, mother's life. The rest are all intentional. I don't understand this apparent contradiction. Please help me. And what biblical principle distinguishes a baby born two months premature from a seven month fetus, making it a crime to kill the first but merely an exercise of personal freedom to intentionally destroy the second. And how can we be the remnant if we support the intentional breaking of the sixth commandment? There is no need at all to get into any argument or debate or any of that. You are just asking simple questions. You are just making a request for more information. These are very simple, very effective questions that are easy to remember but impossible to answer. Tip number six, be aggressive. Do it in the right spirit, be loving, be courteous, but definitely be aggressive. As most of you know, most Adventist leaders are not used to being on the hot seat for Bible questions. They think that they have all the answers, and when you ask these questions, they will have no answers, and just like the bull in a rodeo, they will do everything they can to shake you and make you go away. Just keep pressing, keep asking the questions. Remember that your ultimate goal is not simply to talk about this. The goal is to funnel and direct the questioning and conversation so that the church leader commits to taking action in the same way that Adventist leaders and evangelists will preach and then call people to make a commitment, you have to use the exact same strategy. Your goal is to get them to pick up the phone, write emails, or go speak with their supervisors. And as you can guess, leaders are notorious for trying to evade any responsibility, and they are going to use every trick to avoid taking action, so be ready for that. If you do succeed and they say they will do something, always, always, always box them in on a date or time. Okay, great, praise the Lord. When will you call so-and-so? I'm happy to hear that. Will you speak to so-and-so this week or next week? No matter what they say, always follow up. Hi, church leader. Remember that promise you made to me? How did your conversation with so-and-so turn out? 
Remember, this is their job, and they are getting paid to do this, so hold them accountable. This is part one. In part two, I will show you an example conversation so that you can have ideas on what to expect when you get the question about statistics. Thanks for watching. Click on the links down below to learn more. in our hospitals is the exact same actual real oh.